Mike three might have said also that Helle is was uh, Prime Minister of Denmark for four years before taking this job that is her great passion. Tell me what's top of mind for you right now. Well, when we talk about Yemen, um, I think it's uh, one of the most forgotten crises uh, on this planet. Uh, but as we will also talk about, um, it is perhaps the worst humanitarian uh, disaster uh, going on right now. And what we are seeing in Save the Children is that uh, Yemen is perhaps the worst place to be a child right now uh, on the whole globe. And uh, many of you will not know that um, because uh, it is not covered in the media. Uh, and what we're trying to do today uh, with Nina's help uh, is, uh, is to try and shed a light uh, on, on this because uh, you also have the power to start talking about this wherever you go. And on our stage as well, we have a very, very courageous filmmaker, Khadija. We are going to give you a glimpse of her work right now. Roll the camera. Sana'a is one of the oldest cities in the world, with 2,500 years of history. Today, it is devastated. My country, Yemen, has been under bombs for three years. Few images have reached you. Few journalists can venture there. I wanted to make a film to testify what the population is going through. And then I met Ahmed, his sister, and his nephew. From his window, Ahmed tries to shoot the planes down. Since March 2015, for the children, the threats come from the sky. Since the coalition of nine Arab countries, led by Saudi Arabia, the rebel-held areas of Yemen have been pounded non-stop, causing thousands of civilian deaths. Since the beginning of the bombings, Ahmed has been obsessed with war. Khadija is from, uh, from Yemen, um, and before she left to go to school in the United States, before she started a 20-year career making films about the plight of women, she was married at age 11, married off as a bride, and um, divorced, and had to kind of get out of that situation. Tell us really briefly about your life and how you um, were able to get back into Yemen 
to tell that particular story? Well, <laughs> if I told you and my whole story, it would take the whole day. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, I just want to tell you, I mean, uh, a lot of you heard of Yemen. So it's, uh, I grew up in this country where the weight of tradition marginalizes human rights, where the personal freedom of women doesn't exist, although we're supposed to be born free. And um, unfortunately, I grew up in a family where my father was mentally ill. So I witnessed all the injustice and the violence against my, my own mother, who was uh, beaten every day by my father. And one day, um, he slit her tongue in front of me. It was a horrifying experience. So as a child, I uh, was um, traumatized by what was happening around me. But then when I started school, uh, I was very happy. It was almost my refuge from all these uh, violence and abuses at home. And I knew at that time my life would change through education. But uh, unfortunately, it did not took a long time uh, when my family decided to marry me off at the age of 11. I was devastated. And I have an 11 year old daughter. I just, I just, I was saying to you, I just can't imagine. Can't Can you imagine? imagine? And you find yourself as a child fighting your own family mm -hmm. who's supposed to protect you. Yeah. And then fighting the whole society at that time um, the, just for your basic rights to education and to live my childhood and that which I never had. So and the worst thing that I was disowned by my family twice. Once when I was five, uh, my paternal family disowned me because they don't want to pay uh, child custody. And then at 11 years old when I asked for the divorce by my paternal family. So I would not get into detail uh, about but, the divorce. But yeah, and it's, a, it's an incredible story. And again, you were, you were educated in the United States, American University. Yes. Um, and then you started making films about women like yourself. What, um, and then just to fast forward to uh, this film, how did you get back into the country? Um, because you weren't exactly a, a favorite child there. <laughs> Well, uh, it's true at the beginning of my life, I was a bad example. But later on, when they saw the result, I, was, I became the best example, not only for my family, but for other families who encouraged their daughter to follow in, into my step. <laughs> so, and, uh, you, and to get back into Yemen about to, to do a story about the war, you were with a UN uh, that organization? Was, that was the hardest part, because it took me two years to get into Yemen, because uh, as you know, that uh, Yemen was all the, all the airports were bombed. And uh, not only the airports, schools, every infrastructure, uh, the roads, everything. And that there is also the imposed blockade on Yemen, a total blockade by air, sea, and land. And Yemenis cannot get in or out. So you have to take the permission from the Saudi authority in order to get into your own country. And that it took me two years after uh, a successful attempt. Finally, I was able to go with the humanitarian plane of the UN and I was able to go and make uh, this film. And Halle, tell us, as CEO of Save the Children, tell us about your personal experience um, with Yemen. You've had some personal experience. Yeah, I, I've been there as well, and I, I, mean, I think it's amazing that you could, knowing the country a little bit, it's amazing you could get in there, uh, and uh, I'm sure you, there was also issues around your own personal safety. So I just want to thank you for sharing your story. I think it's immensely important for, for all of us. Um, and, and I was in Yemen because Save the Children is a very large uh, NGO. We work in Yemen. We have been working in Yemen for, for years. Uh, and uh, many of you might not know this, but uh, some part of Yemen is controlled by the government, uh, which is like the Aden uh, re region. And then there's the Sana region, which is controlled by the Houthis. And they've been fighting for, for more than five years now. Yeah. the fifth year. Yeah, five years now. So this, we're in the fifth year of this, uh, this very yeah, completely man-made war. This is, Yemen is a country that was never uh, self-sufficient in terms of uh, food. Uh, and now it's even uh, it's in a stage where they need to have everything from outside. 
and it's impossible to get into Yemen with things because there's a blockade. So this is a very hard war. Uh, it's being fought in a very hard way on both sides, both the Houthis uh, and the government, which is supported by the, the Saudi government and the United Arab uh, Emirates. So this is a very, it's a stalemate uh, situation right now, even though there have been peace talks. The suffering comes from the fact that there there's, it's not possible to get in with supplies, medicine, health services, Food, Save the Children has been uh, caught in a blockade for, for many, many months now, and we spend more time in checkpoints than we do actually getting access with, with things. And that means, all this means that the people who are suffering most are children. Uh, children in, uh, in Yemen are dying from hunger. Uh, a very low estimate says that uh, at least 100,000 children has died uh, from hunger. I sat with one of those child, children in my, my arms. She was eight months old. Uh, she had the weight of a newborn, and if her mother had not found the courage that day to come to the health clinic that Save the Children is running, um, I'm not sure that that baby had survived the day or the week. And that is the situation. That is how children are, are dying of, of malnutrition and hunger. And what's interesting about the film, too, there's, there's the death, there's the... the kids being bombed, but there's also that emotional, psychological yeah. toll on these kids that wanted to be a dentist and a pediatrician. And uh, What do you see like worldwide with children who are, who grow up in that environment? It's, it's so interesting with children, and you will have seen that when you made the film as well, because I mean, I traveled in Yemen, I saw like a make makeshift camp. It wasn't even a refugee camp, it was just like a piece of land where people had put their tarpaulin it wasn't even tents up. And we were giving vaccinations under a tree. I mean, this is 2019, and these are children who get vaccinations under a tree, not hygienic, not anything that it should be, basically. But at least we got to those children. But the other thing is, then you meet, sometimes we, we have this ch child-friendly space that we make in those kind of settings. And then you see the children, and that's what you caught on camera as well, where you see that there's still hope in the eyes of these children. And you ask them, what are you going to do? Like little girls, 11 years old, what are you going to do when you grow up? I always ask that question. And they always say, I want to go to school. I don't want to marry. Uh, they say that quite freely to me, perhaps because I'm a woman. I don't want to marry. I want to go to school. And even though whatever they've been through, there's still that glimmer of hope in their eyes, as you've caught on camera as well. Yeah, and what did you find, Kajia? The, the, what was the biggest revelation to you being with those children? And I, you said you just you found that boy with the rifle shooting at yeah. the jet fighter, which is just, what a powerful image. When I and you knew that was a story. Yeah. Exactly. When I didn't know exactly what I want to do when I went to Yemen, but I just knew that I have... To, to lift the veil out of this war because it's deliberately hidden. They don't want you to see the crime, what's happening over there. So I, as I was walking to my home and I saw this kid, Ahmed, was trying to shoot down the, fi uh, the fighter plane, the bomb plane, and I was uh, traumatized. This boy, you know, is carrying a gun. I knocked the door and I went to talk to the mother and I said, uh, how can you give your son a gun? She said, don't worry, it's an old rival of his. He thinks he's been traumatized since the war started and he thinks he can shoot down the bomber plane. He's trying to so, protect us. It's yeah, not even that he has a violent impulse. He has a, yes. In some ways, it's a, a protective impulse. He's trying to protect his... That's union. when I, exactly. That's when I got the idea to do it through him. And because we didn't have time, I have to film with three cameras spontaneously. And then I have, uh, and they were the real reporters of the film. They were the one they would go and ask questions. But what made it interesting that, like you said, there is a glimmer of hope in these children and they wanted to do something. And then this project gave them like, um, a great hope because they, they found themselves that they can exist mm -hmm. and they can do something and they change. If you see along the film, even Ahmed who was violent, he, he became totally different and he start crying and before there is no way that you can make him cry. From meeting everybody and asking questions about the war, why this war is happening to them, it's just amazing. They made me laugh all the time and at the same time I was crying. Yeah. So uh, it's, that's the hope uh, still on these children and these youth. But this war had stopped. Is it's there uh, any questions about this hidden war from the audience? Um, I wanted to get your perspective on why it is so. Why isn't this on the front page of newspapers? Why is it going on you know, without world attention? 
Because no one cares about Yemen. And there is so yeah. much interest in this war. Yeah, pardon? There is so much interest, money. <laughs> there is a yeah, generated money. We sell I weapons. Mean, yeah, there is, yeah. There is a, there and there I was going to say, these are American there's always a, fighters. Yeah, there's always a, an economy of war. When a war has been going on for long enough, there's always an economy of war. There's people, that, people out there who are making big money. It's the same in Syria and the same in Yemen. Anywhere there's a war, there's a big war economy that's thriving from the fact that it's there because there's a black f market for food and tobacco and alcohol. I mean, there's so many things things that comes with a war where there's so much money. So there's always a strong interest to stop a war. But what the case in Yemen, in my view, is that no one cares really about Yemen. The Saudis don't care, the Iranians don't really care, um, Americans don't care, there are no big interest. And as long as that is the case, uh, it is actually the, the, the plight or the responsibility for the rest of us to be there and talk for anyone to go in and stop this war and for the international community to do that. You will have met the same. When I went there, I met so many mothers and children actually who just said to me, you are here now, you're going in a few days, go and tell people what's happening here. And when, when you guys ask, do I want to be here? Yes, of course, because it's our obligation once we've been there on the ground in Yemen to tell you what's happening so everyone can know this can no longer go on. Uh, it's a man-made war entirely. There's no reason for this war to happen and we all have a responsibility, just a tiny responsibility to try and speak up for those children. And was, was just, just to add what you said, I was so surprised with the Yemenis they still have. So much hope. Of course, they don't have on the, uh, hope in the Arab world or their leaders, but they have so much hope in the uh, European uh, people yeah. and also the American people. They said, well, they, they have this sense. These people are attached and attached uh, to the human values, and they are the one they're hoping that they would uh, make pressure on their politicians and uh, who will make pressure on Saudi Arabia and the, their coalition to stop this war. But this hope is still there, and I hope uh, they are right. <laughs> How can then, people see your film? Uh, well, How this, can this uh, people in this audience see your film? Um, I can send a, a link to it okay. if, if anybody is interesting. But it's been shown now, uh, hopefully, on the French TV, German, uh, Australian, uh, Japanese, Chinese, it's, it's all over, and I was happy that it's been seen because since it's been shown that French TV, all the journalists yeah. start talking about it, uh, about the war, and some they were able to go there, even though they have a difficulty, uh, it was not that easy, but at least they were harassing the politicians uh, with their questions and, uh, and also asking them to stop this war. And Heli, final thoughts on the importance of storytelling and humanizing these situations in order to change policy and to get the attention of political leaders, which you were. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I just think we have to put faces on the war. I mean, the, the, the child that I sat with, she had a mother just sat next to me. They love their children as much as, as we do. Uh, they have done nothing to deserve this, and the victims of war are, or the hardest hit w victims of war are the people who have nothing to do with it. Yemen is actually a lovely country, um, uh, nice food, lovely, lovely people, a nice uh, beat coastline. The Queen, Her Majesty the Queen of this country went on her honeymoon, I think, to, to Yemen quite a few years back. It's a lovely country with, a lovely, with an amazing culture, so obviously it's where the three wise men did their shopping before they came to, uh, to <laughs> Jesus, um, if you read your Bible. So it's a lovely co country with a big uh, story. Um, so I just think we have to re recognize that this is a neighboring country uh, of Europe, um, like Syria is. These are people that didn't, uh, some people were telling me out there, they're also like, they got a lot of jokes in Yemen. They're saying, oh, before we didn't even know who was Sunni and who was Shia. We didn't discuss it like this. And now they've been put into these boxes. So actually very fun, cool people that I want to engage with the rest of the world, uh, and we can do things. I also think we can't let ourselves be stopped by hopelessness. There's nothing to do. Of course, a man-made war can be stopped by men and women, uh, and uh, we just have to do a little bit to talk about this, To And that's why your film, I'm so in awe of what you've been doing, your life story. Uh, I think it's amazing that you get to tell this story, and we should all see your film. Thank you. Thank and Khadija you. and Heli, thank you both for bringing this to light. Thank you.